Okay, so we've got a beginner's guide to hostile interaction. So I can add sly and chill. What else can I do? Oh, is that the only thing I can do? Okay. They'd run a classic good cop, blank cop. We did hard. We could do chill or sly. Let's try chill. They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop interrogation. I've never heard of this before, but okay. I'll handle this. Just got to play it cool. Luca cool. walked calmly to the light switch, flicking it off and on a few times. Oh, Mr. they're going to shook his head, gathering his wits. He's going to see them. Golly, I sure got my bell rung. He over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. Sorry, Mr. Tolliver. This was all a big mistake. Luca, what's going on? Why do you have me strapped down? No one's fault, really. Rolo just got a little startled. Rolo's here. Rolo and Beck emerged from hiding to give a timid wave. Eh. Well, all right. Mistakes happen. You kids gave old Hiram a good scare. Let's just get me out of these ropes and call it even. Luca glanced over to Rolo and Beck, who replied with skeptical looks. Mr. Tolliver, why are you in my grand's basement? I'm here to help, of course. With what? What's my grand up to? If you'll just cut me loose, I can show you. How do I know you can? we can trust you? Wait a minute. How long ago did the grandmother die? Eight years ago? So that was before... That was before everything happened with Luca's dad and Mr. Valentine. How come Luca doesn't know about it? I know I've seen the name Hartford before, but maybe it was just from Juniper. If she's not the grandmother, then who is she? Because I do think that this all has something to do with... Somebody keeps mentioning the founder. Mr. Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. Luca, have I ever done wrong by you? No. And since your grand moved to town, haven't I been nothing but welcoming? Yeah. So why would I turn my back on your family now? It's just... All this stuff seems pretty weird. A board with names of people from town? An archive of my dad's old disturbing patient notes? Luca gestured to the corner. Barrels of explosives? I can explain everything. You just need to untie me. Ooh. You kids deserve an explanation. Luca again to Rolo and Beck. This time they shrugged. Luca began to slowly loosen the bindings. Okay. Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrists. That's good, lad. This will all make sense in time. No, you're not leaving. He edged imperceptibly toward the stairs as he spoke. You see, this town has secrets, Luca. A very dark past, indeed. Before the kids had even noticed his movement, Mr. Tolliver was at the light switch. How did they not notice? He's literally, like, by the stairs now. <laughs> A pass that must be brought to... He punctuated his final words by flicking the switch and rushing up the stairs. Light! <gasps> Did he lock them in? Son of a... Beck darted to the wall and turned back on the lights. It was too late. Rolo confirmed what they all heard. He just locked us down here. Mr. Tolliver's muffled voice came from behind the door. I wasn't lying, you know. This is for your own good. You kids just keep tight down there and let the adults handle they this. bewildered at each other. Play it cool, huh? And not now, Beck. They heard the staccato thump of quick steps exiting the house. The kids looked down in resignation. This isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. For some reason, they'd always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth hoping to conjure some magical words to make this right. Only a hollow croak escaped. The end. Okay. Well, we certainly aren't going to find a grand resolution to our tale locked in a basement. No. Back to the drawing board. All right, so the only other one to try is Sly. They'd run a good cop. Sly cop interrogation. They'd run the classic... Good cop, sly cop interrogation. Luca and Rollo ducked behind a barrel, leaving Beck to her task. Ooh, Beck's gonna do it. Okay. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. 
What? What's going on here? You, you're the Moodwill girl. Please call me back. Sorry about all this. Mr. Tolliver looked down and shifted a bit, testing his restraints. It seems there's been a mix-up. You see, I'm down here for the same reason you are... Juniper sent you here? Beck caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. Ooh, she's good. She'd already gotten him to reveal his relation to Cran. This was gonna be easy. You know how Juniper is with her precautions. Operation Sparkplug has us all on edge. I guess she thought you needed some backup? She sent a child? What better way to avoid prying eyes? Who would suspect a kid? I suppose that makes sense. Mr. Tolliver wriggled a bit in his restraints. Oh, I'm so sorry. Beck quickly removed the ropes. This had, that had to be uncomfortable. A little, yeah. But you understand, we never know who to trust in this town. Mr. Tolliver rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. Very true. So it turns out we're both here Beck to- Beck twirled her hand, as if to prompt Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Destroy the evidence. Beck shook her head and clicked her tongue. Yep, the old gal is nothing if not thorough. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff in agreement. She sure is. Can't blame her, though. If anyone were to find out what, that we're going to destroy the source... Well, we both know how mad that might be. No one will know anything once I finish cleaning things up down here. Beck was on a roll now, playing Mr. Tolliver like a fiddle. So we do know that they're after the source. That makes sense. You're sure you can finish this up on your own? Juniper trusted me for a reason. You can leave the rest to me. Good, there is one more loose end I'll go work on. Loose end? Oh, it's nothing, really. The other day I had the radio on scan while restocking the candy shelf. And wouldn't you know it, I intercepted an odd phrase in a perennial harvest transmission. Underground secrets. That's ominous. I think it might be a password, but Juniper dismiss dismissed it. Said it wasn't mission critical. What's the password for? We don't know. So we have a password and nowhere to put it. It's gotta mean something, right? Good thinking. You should probably go work on that. I've got this under control. That's a relief. Between you and me, this basement gives me the willies. Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated and turned to Beck with a puzzled look. She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. With a shrug, he continued up the stairs, whistling a jaunty tune. Okay, she's good. You guys catch that? Sure did. The whole time, Mr. Tolliver's had a candy shelf. But he never sells it. All he ever sells is his apples. Oh, yeah, this is the biggest Beck problem. blinked slowly <laughs> in disappointment. The password, Rollo. Well, sure, but once things are back to normal, I'll be having a word with Mr. Tolliver about that candy shelf. Fine. In the meantime, I've got an idea. She turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. He said he heard the pa a password on the radio. And any good spy transmission is never what it seems. Beck marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. Ooh, is it a code? We just need to find the hidden meaning. Hmm, okay. What's another word for underground? Below? Uh. Buried, covered. Could it be a cover-up? Maybe it's one of those, e one of those each letter is a number thingy. Hi, Dell. good morning. So you would be 21. N would be 14. D would be, ooh, it's an anagram. Oh, Rolo, you did a smart. I'm so proud of you. Nun Creed's drugstore. Luca and Beck looked at Rolo with amazement. So Del, not much has happened yet. I had a couple of other endings. Uh, we got to one where they actually made it to the Harvest Festival and that grinning hyena jerk guy was giving a speech and then um a, a bomb went off and the whole town froze this time so we know that gran and tulliver and mrs forgetty are all trying to destroy the source it also has been revealed that um <laughs> juniper hartford who is the name of gran has actually been dead for eight years so we don't know who Gran is right now, but I think, uh, cause last time I said, I don't think she's Gran. Um, so we don't know who she is or what, like if she's actually doing this for the good of the town or if she's like a bad person, we don't know. 
Rolo, that was incredible. Well, it's either that or Kren's nude rug store. Yeah, I think you were right the first time. How did you do that? What can I say? I love ciphers. Well, I guess we know where to go next. Investigate Nutcreed's jug store. Okay, well, last time this happened, Mr. Nuncreed threw us into a phone booth. Uh-oh. What's she doing here? You scared me half to death. Sorry. You kids haven't seen Mr. Tolliver around, have you? <laughs> uh, nope. He's got me waiting around like the last slice of pie. I swear that man would be late to his own funeral. Oh, also Del, during this speech, uh, Mr. Kerr, the hyena, said that perennial harvest has actually been in town for four years. So I'm wondering if that's when the switch happened. You're late, Augustus. Sorry, sister. Was caught up with work. Work? You? I had a few more details to lock down for the festival. Oh, what do you have to report? What is this insipid town festival really about? I don't know, the fact that everyone was put up in a hotel for a while six years ago. Oh, wait, did he say that they were put in the hotel six years ago? I might have forgotten that part. I think you're right then. If, if he definitely said that it happened six years ago, then yeah, that's probably when the town switched. So I don't know why Perennial Harvest came in later, but maybe they were trying to do something with the source. I think- Gus looked around nervously. I think Mr. Kerr really does just want to do something good for this town. He's actually a pretty nice guy. You should spend some time with him. I didn't pull the strings installing you as mayor so that you could make friends. Yeah, I I forgot. It's only been since Monday, but like mom brain and time change tiredness, I'm still kind of a mess. Your job is to help me figure out what Kerr and Perennial Harvest's true intentions are with this town. We have a responsibility. This is our father's town. Was. Excuse me. This was our father's town. He's gone, Eris, and he isn't coming back. Father left us with nothing but problems. Mr. Kerr came here and offered to help us. We accepted that help. We didn't agree to them turning Father's warehouse into a toxic dumping ground. That's just a temporary arrangement. The glow can be seen from our damned backyard. They are dumping their nasty little secrets on us. When this all inevitably goes wrong, who do you think will be blamed? Harris's cry hung in the air. We have a new choice to make now, sister. The town is going to change whether we like it or not. Are we going to choose to be a part of that future or be forgotten in the past? It's a shame. Father named you Augustus, but you will always be just Gus. Good night, Eris. I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. Oh boy. It's getting late, children. Don't worry about us. Okay, so Mr. Nuncreed is this way. Wait, I wanna try something. Eris is kind of cool. I'm trying to decide if she's good or not. Wait, I kicked it? How did I kick it? I got an achievement for kicking the melon? <laughs> anyway. I don't know how I kicked it. What's this kid doing here? Solomon stood proudly at the entrance to the drugstore, holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice. Hey, Solomon. We're looking for Mr. Nuncreed. Is he still in there? I'm afraid not. Then where'd you get the candy from? You might say we have an arrangement. Solomon shoveled a surprising amount of licorice into his mouth. I wonder if... Wasn't Solomon doing something for Nuncreed at some point in the last stream? I wonder if he's in on it. Because there was also that scene where he was talking to the other puppy about changing a sign. Sometimes... If... I actually like black licorice. I think I'm one of those weirdos. 
Sometimes it's the small pleasures in life that we might always not have family to rely on. Licorice has never let me down. Well, I can't say licorice would be my first choice, but whatever floats your boat. You could tell a lot about a person about their choice of confection. Oh, yeah, I guess. I like sour gobs. I'm certain you do. I always wondered why Mr. Le Nuncreed kept licorice in stock. Yeah, I mean, it's not my go-to. I'm not a big fan of any, like, chewy candy. I tend to prefer chocolate. Like, if I'm going to have candy, I'd rather have chocolate. You must eat enough of it to make it worthwhile. There are many ways to earn loyalty. For some, it's as easy as cold, hard cash. Well, he's right. It's locked. There's got to be more clues. Okay, let's see. Oh, boy. Am I just looking around the store or... Maybe I need to check out the phone booth, actually. Yep. Have you ever seen anyone actually use this thing? Besides Mr. Nuncreed, no. Ah, interesting. Beck cupped her hands on the glass to peek inside. This is not a normal phone booth. It's got like a blinky keypad. Why would there be a blinky keypad? Krenz nude drugstore, rug store. I mean, underground secrets. The password. Beck flung open the door and they all squeezed in. Oh my god. That's right. When he shoved Luca in there, he tapped a bunch of buttons. All right. Let's see here. Luca cracked his knuckles and entered the letters into the keypad. Underground secrets. Sounds like that did something. Great. Now what? I guess we... The inside of the phone booth dropped loose from its shell. Without even the space to panic, they closed their eyes, held their breath and accepted their fate. Suddenly, the chaotic descent slowed to an effortless landing. It was unclear where they ended up, but at least it was solid ground. The air was stagnant and smelled vaguely of chlorine. I knew it. You knew there was a secret hub full of strange tubes under the phone booth? Of course I did. Didn't I say that? No. I definitely thought it. Luca, do you remember when I said how cool it would be if the trans-dimensional conduits from Hank Atomic Issue 12 were real? Rollo, at one point or another, you said that about every technology ever discussed in Hank Atomic. That's why I'm such a good predictor. It looks like each of these has something written on them. Oh, let's find out. Valentine Fertilizer Warehouse. Isn't that where you almost got snatched? I yeah. Why would Perennial Harvest have a tube going to the old Valentine place? This is starting to feel like something big. I'm trying to think here because Eris was just talking about them using the warehouse. Perennial Harvest main office. Ah, that's where my mom works. What does she do? Science stuff. <laughs> is she involved in all of this? We just moved here. How could she be involved? True. Mining Operations Alpha. You guys have mines here? Not that I know of. The town is all farms and fertilizer. And a series of tubes. Pa always says you can only trust a miner up to the point when they hit gold. Not sure how that wisdom applies in this situation. That's the thing about Pa. You don't always realize what he means until it's too late. Well, that's ominous, Rolo. Um, this suit has a broken mask. Okay, so this is the one who Luca ran into. My guess is it's Nuncreed, because Nuncreed was very suspicious of him. After, like, the day after that all happened. But he didn't say anything. We've at least found their hazmat suit. If it walks like a nun creed and talks like a nun creed, let's not jump to conclusions. No, Luca, we should. Just saying. Ooh. That's a lot of buttons. 
stand aside, Earthlings. I've read enough Hank Atomic to know my way around sci-fi tech. Hulu's hands hovered oh over God, the field we're gonna die. Mountains. Eeny, meeny, miny. Rolla, what did you do? Nothing. I didn't even mow yet. Uh, what was that? Hide. Where are you gonna hide? There's nothing but weird tubes down here. Just get back. <laughs> Shit. 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 Awesome. Oh my god. You all need to come with me. Now. We aren't going anywhere with you. Not until we get some answers. Mr. Underground Secrets. I told them it was an absurd password. But they love anything that makes them feel clever. They... Uh, who? That's no matter. If I can keep you hidden until the festival, I might be able to save your skins. Hold on. <laughs> wait. Wait, 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 wait. He... Why, why is he trying... Why is he trying to help us? It also had me wondering... Why didn't he do anything to Luca... After he knew Luca was at the warehouse? Also... We don't know for a fact that when he put Luca down here, he was trying to hurt him. Have we had this all wrong? I don't know, but choose how. Oh, because my <laughs> my camera is backwards because I didn't want to be on the other side blocking things. So I rotated myself so it didn't look like I was staring in that direction. So everything is backwards now. Actually, no shadow, it's a code. You gotta figure it out. Hold on now, I like my skin. This all stops now, Nuncreed. I don't Joseph think- waited for a moment in silence. I don't think Nuncreed's bad. I'm starting to think that maybe he's not bad. <laughs> there it is. Okay. I was waiting for that. You sound just like him. Who? Walt? his dad. You don't get to talk about my dad. You know your father and I were friends back before. He gestured toward the strange tubes. All of this? That's a lie. It's true. I used to bounce you on my knee. What happens? Same thing that always happens. Reality, complications, life. We were a team, Walt and I. An idealistic doctor and a bright-eyed pharmacist. Hell bent, or both hell bent on helping folks. Uncle Joseph, yeah. So you were his sidekick? No, we were partners. Helped the patients. He helped the patients, and I helped him. Yep, total sidekick. Creed let out a growl of a sigh. <sighs> Luca, I need you to know this. I need someone to know this. One day, Sharper Valentine comes to us. Says he's got an opportunity. He found something he didn't quite understand. And he was willing to pay us both handsomely to help him understand it. And my dad said no. Your father and I both believed in helping people. But the thing I could never get him to understand was, it's a lot easier to help others if you help yourself now and then. Classic sidekick into villain plotline. Walt loved being righteous almost more than he loved his family. He was wrong about one thing, though. When he begged me not to take Valentine's offer, he said, Joseph, if a person says yes one time to Sharper Valentine, he'll make sure they keep on saying yes to him until the day he's dead and gone. He shook his head wistfully. Sharper's long gone, but he's still got me saying yes. Is there a point to this sob story? Not really, no. Just an old man trying to delay what needs doing. Nuncree took a menacing step towards the children. I am still not sure. Okay, I'm just going to say this before I continue. I think... I think we've had it wrong. I don't actually think Nuncreed is bad. Because... Alright, so there's a couple of reasons for this. One, he was the one in the... Um, 
warehouse when he saw Luca. He never actually hurt him. Um, he also knew it was Luca the next day and didn't do anything to stop him. Then when that other, uh, the other path where Luca told him about it, he put him in the, in the phone booth, but we now know that the phone booth doesn't lead to anything specifically dangerous. It's underground. And I almost wonder if it's a bunker of some sort. I actually think Gran Tolliver, or maybe just Gran, it could just be Gran and she's got Tolliver and Forgetti convinced that they're doing the right thing, but we already know that Gran is possibly not Gran. And I don't know who she is, but it's possible she's the bad guy in all of this. I don't know who she is though. It's possible she's the founder, because we still don't know if the founder is a good person or not. It's possible she's Sharper Valentine. I don't, I mean, we don't know for a fact that he's dead. She, she could be the, she could be hit Luca's mom. We don't know. We don't know a lot about Luca's mom. I don't know why she would be doing this, but, well, actually, no. She could be Luca's mom, and this could be revenge on what happened to the father. I feel like the fact that in both of the memories that Luca has of his parents, you never see their faces. They're always turned away. And they're the only characters in this game that that has been the case for the entire time. And I'm trying to figure out if there's a reason for that. I almost feel like they're hinting at something that maybe they're not the good guys or that I don't know I, I don't know maybe we'll find Superman I tried to keep you safe I tried to keep you and Juniper out of this but you forced my hand Luca began to laugh what you don't really know my gran isn't out of this she's been scheming right under your nose Juniper seems like she's planning to crash the town's party She's going to disrupt the festival. Why would she- the color drained from Nuncrete's face. How does she know? Apparently she knows a lot of things. What? Let's just say this isn't the only underground lair we've busted into today. And honestly, hers is way cooler. She's got maps and explosives and bad intentions, big man. Nuncrete grabbed Luca by the shoulders. Uh oh. His eyes were frantic. You need to tell me what she's going to do right now. They're like, oh my God, I haven't had combos in a million years. She doesn't understand what it is she's messing with. I, uh, tell me now, she's in danger, boy. I don't know. She had a map with a mark on the fountain in the town square? The fountain, but why would- A jolt of realization struck Mr. Nuncrete. She knows about the source? What the heck is the source? Hi, Val, welcome back. If she tries to destroy the source, it could catalyze and... Dear God, she's going to freeze us all. Yeah, we, we did know this. You all need to run. Run where? Away. As far away from this town as you can get. Head west and don't look back. Late night pizza flavored? That sounds good. That did not go how I have expected. So we're totally following him, right? Totally. See you on the other side. Hurry up before it shuts down. You good? Yep. I love this town. <laughs> Chapter eight. Yeah, let the record show. I no longer think Nuncreed is bad. I'm picturing the Mario pipe sound over there. The cold, yeah. hard truth. Beck leapt up, allowing the suction to yank her into the dark. Dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera as she seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only points of reference were glints of upcoming turns, which approached with frightening speed, only to carry her gracefully along. 
Also, Gran has been working with Eris, and I'm also not convinced that Eris is a good person. I'm unsure about Augustus. He seems like he doesn't know what's going on. She heard the tinny, distant echoes of Rollo's glee. Once she stopped fighting against it, the ride was impossibly smooth. Then, all of a sudden, as if minutes had passed in an instant, light blazed into view. Oh, by the way, um, we're on the nice page again. A burst of wintry air snuffed across her face, and she was flung out into the cold. Oh, we're back in the other town. So this is how they got there. Because remember, um, the when they were being chased by Mr. Kerr, he said something about the tunnels. seems kind of cool. That was intense. Yeah. I think I might have parted with some fluids in there. Oh. Any idea where we are? Somewhere cold. Doesn't look like it got any of us. It doesn't look like it got on any of us. Oh. Stop. It didn't feel like we traveled that far. So where did it all go? Oh my god, Rolo. This place sucks. Why would anyone even want to blow something up out here? Only one way to find out, I suppose. We've got to catch up to Nuncreed. I think he went this way. So the source is not just in this town. It's also in the other town, too. This looks familiar, yeah. Maybe we can clear off the snow. No time, Nuncreed's getting away. Hold on. I want to see most I want to see something. Okay, this is starting to feel really familiar. I may not be the most well-versed on all things Beacon Pines, but this does look like some sort of frozen replica of the town. I got it. It's so obvious now. Mr. Nuncreed is an alien. Rollo, stick with me here. His species can only live in sub-zero temperatures. Oh boy, here we go. The source is their base camp dimension, so naturally they keep it cold. We found it by traveling through those metallic wormholes back there. The final objective. Kill us all and shapeshift into a Beacon Pine citizen of their choosing. You never really had me, but you very much lost me there. You get used to it. We should keep moving. Okay, there's nothing here. I know, right, Del? I feel like for Rolo's sake, one of the endings needs to have aliens. As they rounded the corner to the frozen town square, they spotted Mr. Nungreed inching cautiously toward a pit at its center. Wait, so she blows up the source in this town? Is there not a source in the other town? Huh. He held his arms out gingerly, as if approaching a beast in the wild. Upon closing the distance, Luca recognized what Nuncreed was after. Gran stood confidently at the edge, one arm outstretched over the abyss. Nearby, a wheelbarrow had been emptied out. She held a lit torch, which flickered in the bitter wind. Juniper, I don't know what you think you're doing, but I assure you this is not going to solve anything. If you drop that, you've doomed this whole town. It sounds like she just got a hold of really avail- any of- bleh, bleh, bleh. Let me try this again. It sounds like she just got a hold of a readily available map, but it represented the old town. Oh. So, how'd she figure- Oh, wait a minute. She hasn't lived here the whole time, right? She only came to town when Luca's mom disappeared, which was- fairly recent, right? She was only here for a, a year. I think this is starting... I think I might be right. I think Gran is the mother. And I think she's doing this because she thinks this is going to save everyone. 
It would also explain why Luca has been, why, she, why she's still protecting Luca. Because if she was anybody else, she wouldn't care about Luca. Oh, it wasn't me who doomed this town. I've been watching you, Joseph. I know what you've done. You and your co-conspirators. Ran? What's happening? Luca, you and your friends need to leave right this moment. Yeah, she still cares. Toward the kids. Desperation in his eyes. He, she still cares and so does Nuncreed. Listen to your grandma, Luca. This is between me and Juniper. Rowan back held steadfast in awe. Luca approached closer. Mr. Nuncreed spun back toward Grant, his voice growing louder. You've got it all wrong, Juniper. Just hand over that torch. You don't understand what you're doing. How could I possibly trust you to do the right thing? Walt told me everything. This is the mom. This is the mom, because there was that whole scene about Luca's dream where the mom and the dad were arguing about something, and then that was the last day that the father was seen? I think this is the mom. He trusted you, and you betrayed that trust. Luca, did you know that this man's entire life is a lie? If it weren't for him, your father might still be alive. Mr. Nuncreen winced with anguish. His voice hardened. That's not true. They both now yelled, not to each other, but at fate itself, making their peace with long-held burdens. The wind howled with encouragement. Walt was like a brother to me. We just had different ideas about how to affect change. Very convenient that your way just happened to line your pockets. No, that's not fair. They menaced at each other, both catching their breath. The moment balanced on a knife's edge. Uh, oh God. Amid a blur of emotions and memories, Luca's mind flooded with questions. The wind calmed, as if to give him the stage. Oh shit. And in the stillness, he began to... I think we're gonna start with weep. And in the stillness, he began to weep. It was Poor all baby. just too much. Falling to his knees, Luca whimpered softly. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. This will make this will all make sense soon, Luca. Then everything can go back to normal. I promise. This is. I think this is the mom. She stiffened up because and brandished the torch at Mr. Nuncreed. He wouldn't know what the grandmother looked like. Although you would think that he would recognize his own mother, but if Gran is her mom, they could look similar and like she could just be like using makeup or something. You can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Once their precious source is destroyed, we'll see where their loyalties fall. Juniper, don't. Ignoring his final plea. Oh, Grand shit. The torch into the We're all gonna die. She smiled and exhaled in relief. Mr. Nuncreed moaned in resignation. The torch echoed as it ricocheted. We're gonna die. You see, Joseph, I've learned very one very important lesson in life. If you want things to change, then you must be willing Before to... Before Grand could finish, the ground shook her to silence. protected him I'm I'm this is the mom I come on time to spin around and run to Luca there's no way this is not his mother because if the grandmother is dead this has got to be his mother I just don't know why she's doing what she's doing Her attempt to shield him an honorable but trifling act unflinching love pitted against an unthinking horror there was no contest her warm embrace froze in an instant that is where they remain fixed in place forever and so our story ends on this melancholy scene in a town brought low by its secrets
sits the frozen statues of a misguided band of meddlers. The end. Well, that was dire. On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming from. Mm -hmm. Now, we just need to find a way to deal with a mystic, unfathomable force of nature. I don't want to deal with me, though. Why, why am I here? Why am I in this? 